Hey guys, so it's been a while since I've talked about books at all on this channel. I just wanted to do a quick video today talking about some of my favorite books of all time. And you might notice a theme, I love historical fiction so much. I don't really talk about books very much, so this is a special little opportunity for me to refresh this video. If you've heard me talk about anything like this in the past, you'll recognize the themes here are consistent. So the first one you most definitely have heard me mention before is Outlander. I absolutely love this series, both on stars and in the book form and the audiobooks. I think that why I like it so much, even though it's a different depiction of marriage, meaning with time travel, <laughs> it really is something that is what marriage is like and it's honest and it's moving and I just love how promised they are to each other. It's a very sweet and moving book that I just continually learn more about. So I don't know how it ends. You don't either because she's not done writing it. <laughs> That's kind of why I've paced myself. Even though I started this book or this series like maybe three years ago, I haven't sped through them. I'm only on book six. I don't want to finish before she's done writing. So it's just fun to be able to read it and then watch it later. When I first started it though, it was great to be able to watch it and then find out about, oh, there's a book version and read that too. The books are kind of more detailed and the show is more about the suspense. So you might wanna be mindful of that. I'm at the point though where I love these characters so much, I don't need the suspense as much anymore. But the audiobook is so good too, the narrator on there. I mean, she just brings every character to life and helps with getting past all of the Gaelic words that pop in here. I just realized I didn't really talk about what Outlander's about. So I will keep this short. I actually had no idea what this was about at all when I first turned on the show and I had a fever one day, um, but I just really enjoyed the fact that it's about time travel in historical fiction. It starts out in World War II, but then it jumps everywhere. It jumps to the 1700s and then it'll jump back to the 1960s. And I just love that there's mainly two characters and everyone else is not prominent in the book to the point where it's distracting. There's not like, continually new characters that you have to learn and, and empathize with. It's really just Jamie and Claire in this book and how they find each other and kind of how their stories just kind of fell together. He's in the 1700s, so Claire falls back in time through the stones of Cregna Dune that are in Scotland when she's with her current husband in the 1940s. And then of course her husband isn't alive anymore when she jumps to the 1700s meets Jamie and I don't want to give you any more details because you just have to find out on your own. So you're going to start to see a theme which is because I love historical fiction, 90% of books in historical fiction are based in World War II. That's not like something that I just love. I don't try to find World War II books. If you're gonna read a good historical fiction book, it's going to bring up World War II. And that brings up Kristen Hanna's book, Nightingale. I really hope that they make a movie out of this. I've heard that they're going to, but it's still not happened. And I think it was supposed to already. I don't know what's going on, if they even will anymore. Basically, it's about in France, in World War II, where there are two sisters. Then the Germans encroach and take over the whole area and they, a lot of people are kicked out of their homes so that Germans can live there as they are in the army there. In fact, I have to say, I just watched a movie about the same topic on Netflix re recently. I think it was called If I May. And so The Nightingale was extremely excruciatingly painful to read as most World War II books are and I was just sobbing by the end of it and so I was telling this to Zach recently and he was like so why do you want to have people read this book <laughs> and I think it's just because it's so emotionally compelling and a lot of books you can get really bored you're like I'm a hundred pages into this book and I still don't care <laughs> and that's just not the way that you'll feel about this book or any of the ones that I'm talking about today it was interesting to read about France during this time and a lot, a lot of the struggles that happened too. I think a lot of the times that I'd read about World War II, it was based, you know, either in England or in Germany, but to read about France and all that happened at that time was very interesting. I can count on my hand how many times that I have cried in a book 
or in a movie. I just don't really cry a lot in stuff like this and I was bawling by the end of this one. It was just so good. For the third book, I have to bring up a book I just recently mentioned, which was Where the Crawdads Sing. I listened to it in audiobook form because I've got just so many credits over there and I've just got to use them all. <laughs> and I was really happy to pick this one up because it was very highly rated. Like I've never seen so many five star reviews. It was about North Carolina, which was even more special to me being that I was born and raised in North Carolina, but it was more like on the coast. The main girl in it is someone who is grown up by herself in the marshes and her family is just not present and instead of sending herself to child services, she raises herself. But it's just beautiful imagery for the nature there when she's, you know, in her canoe or just out in the water. There are just minnows that are diving around her feet and the whole thing was just so vividly written. I could see and smell everything that was around her when she's in this empty house on the marsh and how the moonlight hits it just right. It was beautiful. And then also it's a mystery. And I love a good mystery book because I'm just interested in turning the page and being really invested and involved and trying to figure it out, trying to understand how predictable the book is. And I would not say that it's a very predictable book. It was just very interesting. And I'm really looking forward to how Reese Witherspoon is going to produce the movie form of the book. So that's gonna be awesome. It's also one of the very few books that I've given a five-star review to over on my Goodreads where you guys can like follow along to any of these books that I'm talking about and they're not all five-star reviews so you'll be able to kind of get my critique too. <laughs> the fourth book is also a World War II book and this one is very interesting because it's very heartfelt. It's a perfect feel-good book as you can tell from the cover. They're just kissing. <laughs> But why I like it so much is that it's unexpectedly written about Iowa. I feel like there's not many books written about Iowa and World War II all in one. <laughs> so you won't find many books like it. Because it's based in like the Midwestern realm, I just really appreciate that. I married somebody from Wisconsin and just seeing the fields and everything in Iowa in my mind was just gorgeous and beautiful. Basically what happens with this is it talks about how there's forbidden love between this girl that grows up on a farm and a prisoner of war who's working on her farm. Years pass in this book, so she's not even just a little girl anymore. Like she's starting to be like on her own and it's just a very interesting book by what I remember. I read it about a couple years ago and it just stuck with me and it's carried a special place on my bookshelf. And this final book is Jane Eyre. It's a classic. I feel like everyone says that they read or they read it in school or whatever. I never read this book until a year ago. And so I'm so thankful that my friend sent me this book. Thank you so much, Rachel. It, it was just nice to be able to catch up on a book that really I felt like I should have read by now. And not only that, but since then I've read spinoffs of Jane Eyre. I've watched the movie. I, you know, like the audiobook of this was another great one. I, halfway through it, I actually switched over to having an audiobook while I read. That's just one thing that I like to do because I'm a slower reader. I like to keep up with the pace and it just kind of helps me to add dimension to the characters too. But I love this book. If you don't know what it's about, it's got a lot of imagery as far as things like when the book first opens, she's sitting there reading and she's looking out on a November sky at night and there's moonlight that's just shining in. I guess moonlight has been a theme in this book wherever Jane is going to experience change. The writer, Charlotte, she definitely infused a lot of what was going on in her own life into this book. It was very interesting. I think any type of book like this that's written in like the 1800s is an interesting perspective of what it was like at the time to be a woman and you know without a man it, or like a status of any form you just couldn't have a very livable life i just love the turn that it takes it's kind of like a cinderella book in essence where you just find out how she just has special things that happen in her life and everything works out in the end and that's it. Those are the books that I just adore and have a special place on my shelf. And I'd love in the comments if you write down what your favorite book is of all time. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You be one of a kind, the best I'll ever find.